Chapter 3. One Last Sunset. Grand Inquisitor's point of view. Third person. Two stormtroopers hesitantly walked in the Grand Inquisitor's office. They still had no trace of Kel or his crew, so needless to say, they were about to feel his wrath. Any updates from our inside source? The Inquisitor asks. No, sir. The troopers respond. Very well, then. Both of the troopers start gasping for air as they're slowly lifted up. After a couple of seconds, the Inquisitor finishes them off, throwing them out of his office. He angrily sits up and stares out his window. He watches the other Inquisitor's ship land, which means it was time for him to depart off the planet. He grabbed his lightsaber and made his way to the docking station. Everyone bowed before him as he entered the ship. Once he settled down, he squeezed his hand angrily. He was displeased that no one has managed to find any trace. You all right, sir? The ninth sister asks. Update me when we have something on the little Jedi and his friends. The ninth sister nods in response and gets back to work on the ship. I will find you, Cal Kestis, one way or another. You can't hide forever. Time skip. Annika's point of view. Are you sure I don't need to worry, Apollana? I began. As she finished curling my hair, I could hear her giggle softly. I promise, you have nothing to fear. Now stop worrying and relax for once. Stress ages you, you know, she implies. You're very wise for your age, I reply. Thank you, but if I'm being honest, I admire you a lot. Me? Really? Oh, yes, she replies. I wish I had cool powers like you. I can tell you're strong and brave, even if you don't see it yourself. Sometimes I struggle with that. I guess a lot of it has to do with fear of the unknown. So I tend to hold back, I reply. That's perfectly logical, though. Want my advice? Embrace the fear and push through. Don't let it consume you, because that's when you do lose and fall into traps. We all don't know what the future holds. That's why it's important to be present in the moments you hold dear. I smiled at her kind response and stood up. Go on. Lover boy is waiting for you, she jokes. I chuckled at her comment and sauntered down the hall to find Cal. After searching for a good ten minutes, I found Cal outside on the balcony. He turned around slowly and smiled once he saw me. Do me a favor and close your eyes, he begins. I do as I'm told and feel his hands turn me around. One, two, three. Open them. As I opened my eyes, I covered my mouth in shock, feeling the tears beginning to form in my eyes. Words can't even begin to describe how I feel about you, Cal began. Guess it's time I proved it. I know the future is uncertain, but I know one thing. I'm ready to spend forever with you. Annika Jello, will you marry me? Yes, yes, Cal Kestis, I'll marry you. I watched him as he took my hand, gently sliding the ring onto my finger. He picked me up by surprise and spun me around. When he set me down, I felt his hands cusp my face. I stared into his sparkling green eyes and fell in love all over again. I closed my eyes once I felt his warm lips against mine. All of the butterflies in my stomach melted away as his muscular arms wrapped around my body, pulling me close. I yearned for more, but we both pulled away when we heard a loud cough. You two should really get a room, said Grease. I blushed from embarrassment and hid my face in Cal's chest. So when's the ceremony, Grease adds. How does tomorrow sound, says Apollana. It would be a private ceremony, of course. That sounds perfect, Cal replies. Time skip. The next day. Marin walks up and gently places the crowned veil in my hair. I'm happy for you and Cal, she begins. Thank you, Marin. That means a lot, I reply. I took a deep breath as I walked down the halls, awaiting to see Cal. I'm sure his nerves were just as bad as mine. I saw the curtains blowing, which meant I was already at the venue. Are you ready? Marin responds. Yes. I'm ready. Obi-Wan walks over, holding one of his hands out for me to take. I smiled at his kind gesture and took his hand. You look wonderful. Cal is lucky to have you. Thank you, Obi-Wan. I'm lucky to have him as well. As we walked down the aisle, I felt the cold breeze engulf my face. Cal's point of view. I felt my heart racing seeing Annika. Her beauty was indescribable sometimes. Her long golden brown hair blew softly against the breeze. Her brown eyes shimmered against the sunset, and her smile lit up the entire room. 
When Obi-Wan finished escorting her, I took over and removed her veil from her face. You look gorgeous, I whispered. Thank you. You look very handsome, Annika whispered back. We both looked at the priest and began our vows. Today, in times like these, we are reminded that love is the strongest bond we can ever find. Now, let us begin the vows. I gently took Annika's hands and looked down at her. I, Cal Kestis, take you, Annika Jallo, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish from this day forward, until death do us part. And I, Annika Jallo, take you, Cal Kestis, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish from this day forward, until death do us part. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. I gently placed my hands on Annika's waist, pulling her close to me. As I leaned in, I felt her soft, warm lips greet me with a passionate kiss. When we broke away, I smiled as we watched everyone cheering while throwing rose petals. I guided Annika over to the other side of the venue to get some privacy. Wow, I can't believe we got married in Naboo, Annika exclaimed. Couldn't picture a more perfect day with the perfect girl, I replied. I noticed from afar someone was playing a harp. The tune sounded so elegant and romantic, almost as if you could soar across the stars. Shall I have this dance? I began. I'd be honored, Annika replied. As we danced slowly to the music, I couldn't help but feel more and more drawn to Annika. I never felt this way about anyone before. All I wanted was to keep her safe, and I will do everything in my power to do just that. My heart is forever yours, Calcestis. I love you so much. I love you more, Annika, forever and always. I gently spun her around one last time before pulling her closer to me. We stared into each other's eyes for what seemed like an eternity until we shared another gentle kiss. Soon, we broke away and stared at the sunset, unaware of what our future will hold. End of chapter 3